The perfect and ideal pair of jeans in my wardrobe is something that's going to be flattering, it's going to be stylish and also comfortable. I've tried on so many jeans over the years, I'll be trying on a ton of jeans today and now I'm able to really pinpoint what to look for in denim for a very flattering yet comfortable fit. So today I'm testing jeans from slightly more on the affordable side to one eye-wateringly expensive pair from a Goldie and we'll see who makes the best jeans and whether expensive is actually better. I made this little graph and I'll be putting my rankings and results on it so we can see as the price goes up whether that equates to better quality or not. Hint, it doesn't always. The first half of today's video, I'll be talking about my tips of what to look for. In the second half, I'll go on to the reviews. I'm reviewing fairly popular styles of jeans and I'll kind of tell you whether I think it's worth it. There are lots of jeans today and for every pair of jeans, I'll have the name, the size I took, the colorway I took, the inseam I chose. I'll have all of that information in the description box down below if you'd like to check it out. If I'm choosing a pair of jeans, something I would avoid are overly trendy styles. I'm sure you've noticed, but every couple of years, the fashion moves from high rise to low rise. Sometimes there will be particular colors and washes in style, and it basically rotates. What I've noticed in my wardrobe is that once I have a style that is flattering on my body shape and works for my personal style, I really don't need to stray away too far from this. Something else to skip on are details that make a jean less versatile. No matter the price point, I see all these different jean styles, whether that is panel, two-tone, with cargo pockets. And most of the time, these are styles that are not versatile enough for me to justify. At this point, I'll always look at the fabric and composition of the jean. My tip and preference here is to look for something that has 1 or 2% elastane and 98-99% cotton. A lot of people go for 100% cotton because it won't lose its shape and it will feel the sturdiest. But what I found is that 1 or 2% of elastane has never really hurt the durability of my jeans, but it's given me more comfort. So it's always Always that perfect spot where I'm able to balance comfort and durability. I've seen jeans that do go upwards of 3 to 5% elastane, and I've also seen jeans that had like 20% elastane. So as we move up in this number, the jeans often become too stretchy, and these jeans can definitely lose their shape more easily. If you're very comfort oriented, something I would highly recommend for you is searching for a Lyocell cotton blend jean. The reason why this is noticeably more comfortable is because the Lyocell material is ultra breathable, it's also lightweight. So the jeans made from Lyocell cotton always feel a bit lighter to me, and because it's lighter, it feels more pliable, more flexible when I'm wearing it. The trade-off here is that sometimes these jeans can be a little bit thinner. They don't feel maybe as sturdy. But that being said, one of my most worn jeans is Lyocell and I haven't had an issue with holes or breaking or anything like that. Probably the most important thing that determines whether a jean is going to be flattering comes down to rise and length. So I've grouped these two together because basically where something starts and ends is what is going to be highlighted on our body. If you have a jean that's high rise, it's going to highlight the waist. If you have a jean mid rise, it's going to highlight kind of like the natural way slightly lower. And then a low rise jean will highlight the hips. Same with length, ankle versus full length. You're either highlighting your ankles and cutting it off at like the smallest point or you can go for a full length for maximum elongation. When we're choosing rise and length, so much of it is personal preference, and it comes down to what illusions you want to create, what you want to highlight when you're wearing the jean. My preference, and what I honestly recommend most people, is that you go for a high rise because it cuts you off at the smallest point of the body, the waist, and it will also always elongate the legs a little bit more. So let's talk about why you might choose a mid or low rise jean. And I think one of the big things that comes up again and again is comfort. For a lot of people, high rise will be the most comfortable, that's me. But others, you'll find a mid rise a little bit more comfortable, less restrictive. If you already have very long legs, I have some friends where they don't really want to lengthen their legs anymore and shorten their torso. So that's a good case for a mid rise because it will feel more balanced um, on your frame. And then when it comes to low-rise jeans, I think it's a matter of style and vibe. So obviously you've got the Y2K look and it's quite a young, trendy, modern look right now. It's on my style and I find that it does not look good on me, but it's just something to consider if that is absolutely your personal style. My next tip is that if you're looking for quality jeans, always look at the stitching 
um, and construction. So when I look at the jeans that are more affordable versus more expensive, one of the most noticeable difference I see is the stitching. And basically when it's more affordable, slightly lower quality sometimes, what you'll notice is that the thread they use is thinner and the stitches are all longer so there's fewer of them. Whereas with more expensive jeans, the thread is thicker and there's more stitches and they're smaller. Back pockets. I always like it when it sits a little bit higher and not too low. The moment that the back pocket moves lower, I find that it just makes the butt look kind of saggy and it's not the most flattering. Whereas when it's sitting a little bit higher, I always find it more lifting, more flattering. If you're ever purchasing a pair of jeans where you need to get it hemmed, decide whether you want to keep the original hem. So I learned this a couple of years back from one of you guys and it blew my mind because up until then, I didn't know you could keep the original hem when you were tailoring jeans. And what I'm talking about is basically this original hem. You can tailor your jeans and keep this. There are tutorials online on how to do it yourself. And then of course your tailor can do it as well if you like the original hem. So when it comes to closures on jeans, there is always a debate between buttons versus zip. So buttons are the original style and Levi's didn't use a zip until 1947. Technically buttons should fit better and just give you a nicer, smoother look there. But do I actually notice a difference? Not really, and I think they both work okay for me. So part two of the video now, and we're now gonna get into the fun part of ranking these jeans on the little graph I created. I'm usually a size 26 in jeans, so as we go throughout today's video, you'll be able to see if I went for my true size or if I size down. I think it makes sense to start with the Levi rib cage because this is a jean that I've worn for over three years, and it's held that top spot as my favorite jean in that time. So it's a 12 and an eighth inch rise, ultra high rise, and I love the way that looks. It's a straight leg and then ankle length. So in Australia, we only have these in the 29 inseam, so I actually have to get these tailored. But if you're based in the US or elsewhere, you will have it in the different inseams. With jeans, and especially with the ribcage. Just because they are the same style doesn't mean it's the same composition. Not only do they have very different composition, they actually look a little bit different to me. The light blue pair feels a little bit more wide-legged and I also feel like it has better drape, so the way that it's shaped around the ankle looks different. Whereas the medium blue pair is more your traditional straight leg and it has a little taper at the bottom. Even though they look different, I would say both pairs look good from the front and from the back. Something else I've noticed in fit is that the medium blue fits me better around the waist and hip and then the lighter blue has a little bit more of a gap on the waist but what I find is the case is that the light blue which is the cotton lyocell is more comfortable so there are small pros and cons to each of the compositions but ultimately the rib cage is just a good jean, no matter which style you select this is also the jean that I can definitely say holds up well this has gone to the wash countless times over the last couple of years. Maybe they've softened up slightly, but they have definitely not lost their shade and they still look great. So on my ranking, I'm going to put it somewhere in the middle for price. And then it's definitely going to go on my favorite side because this is a jean that's tried and tested. I've tried enough Levi jeans over the years to know that they're all pretty good. But I was especially curious about the 501s and I tried them in the 90s style. So 100% cotton mid-rise. So when I tried this style on. I think that it makes me look a lot boxier, especially if I compare it to the ribcage. These 501s have a 10.5 inch rise, and when we compare that to the 12 and an eighth inch of the ribcage, you can really see how much more flattering that jean is on me. But what I'll say about this jean is that it looks very nice through the leg. I think what the 100% slightly thicker cotton does is that it gives it a very sleek look on the leg. It seems to drape very well and that looks really nice. So these jeans are the same price as the rib cage, but I like them a lot less. So they're gonna go somewhere here. When I was deciding which jeans to try on for today's video, I was looking at a mix of bestsellers and just general recommendations I could find online. So something that I saw pop up a lot are mango jeans. I was honestly very pleasantly surprised by this mango jean. I think that this is what a mid-rise done right looks like. It's the mid-rise combined with this slightly slimmer, more classic leg shape that I think works. Whereas when you have a baggy jean with a mid-rise, I sometimes feel like that isn't always the most flattering. For myself, I like the 1% elastane, you know, but for this style of jean, I actually find it fairly comfortable without it. 
So the 100% cotton really feels quite good. When it comes to the denim quality and fabric, I feel like it's pretty good. I'm not noticing any significant differences between this and something like my Levi jeans. I think it feels almost as nice as those, um, but it definitely doesn't surpass either. Would I prefer this jean ever over my Levi ribcage? Probably not. I'm still going to prefer a high rise, still going to prefer the stretch, but I think for what this is, mid rise, no stretch, it's quite nice. At a very similar price point to the mango jeans, we've got this pair from Pull and Bear. This is just called their straight leg high rise jean. And it's also made from 100% cotton without stretch. Something I immediately noticed with this jean is that it's not the most comfortable. It's what I think of for 100% denim. I know that I'm just trying these on, so I haven't given it time to mold and to really suit me. But to be honest, even wearing these at the beginning, I, I don't think I can do it. It's especially tight for me around the knee. And I also feel like it catches a little bit at the top of my hip. So I'm constantly having to pull the jean down a little bit. Um, so it doesn't catch on that hip area. However, the cotton material used for this is actually quite nice as well. It's similar to the mango one. It's a decent thickness and weight. It feels quite durable if you were going to wear this for a long time. The mango jeans, I'm gonna place in the more affordable section and then somewhere in the middle of my ranking. And then for the pull and bear jean, I'm gonna put them on the left side. Not because they are absolutely awful, they're actually okay. Um, but I don't see anything too special in them. Also, to be perfectly fair, it's not made for my body type, but it could work for someone else because the quality was actually fine. I am so excited to talk about this next pair. It is the Everlane Way High Jeans, and this one I got in the waist 25, the 27 inch inseam. So I love this jean so much because 12 and an eighth inch rise, perfect high rise in my books. I love the leg shape of these. It's a little bit slimmer than my rib cage, but obviously still a straight leg and it has a little taper right at the bottom. As someone who's relatively short, I feel extremely tall when I'm wearing these jeans. I also love the fact that it has the perfect waist to hip ratio. For me. Throughout today's video, almost all of the jeans I think don't fit me perfectly in that waist to hip ratio, but this jean, it fits perfectly. This is very hard to come by, so I would say if you find this to be an issue where you're slightly curvier in the hips, very small in the waist, this is going to fit extremely, extremely well here. This jean is also the most flattering from the back. I think that before I always expected a little bit of wrinkling on the leg. But with this jean, it sits so smoothly at the back and I think it's just such a sleek look. This jean has 2% elastane and I've been wearing this for the last couple of days, occasionally sitting down for an hour or two to work in it and it actually feels very comfortable. I did size down on that pair by the way and the fit is perfect. So price wise, the Everlane jeans are a little bit more expensive than the ribcage so they go a bit higher. And then they are going to be on the furthest right side because they are by far the best jean I've ever, ever worn and tried. The fact that I love the Everlane jeans so much probably explains why I was a little bit disappointed by this next pair. So these are the Agoldi Riley jeans in the high rise straight crop with the Riley jean. It is a straight leg, but slightly on the slimmer side. And then there are also two types of Riley's. We've got the Riley with stretch, which is what I have. And then you've also got the Riley without stretch. If I'm being honest, the first thing I have a problem with is the composition. So I've talked about throughout today's video how much I love Lyocell jeans, but I think that this jean is almost a little bit too light. This just feels like it could stretch out. The good side of this is that of all the jeans I'm showing today, this is the most comfortable. It almost feels like a jegging and it's so soft, so comfortable to wear. I'm just worried it will stretch. And then for the back side, let me know if you think I'm wrong here. I feel like the pockets are sitting a little bit low, especially for my preference. I wish they were like slightly higher, a little bit more lifting. This jean is very expensive and there are definitely some details I noticed that is better than the other jeans. So for example, it's got a raw edge, but unlike the mango and the pull and bear, they didn't just like cut it off um, raw. Do you see that? It's like any other jean, but they've distressed this edge here, as opposed to it being just the raw edge. I'll do close-ups here so you can see, but I do find that the Agoldi stitching is definitely superior than all of the other jeans. The stitch used is thicker and it's visibly thicker, and then it's closer together, making it feel just a bit more durable and strong. For this jean, if I were to buy them, I would choose the 99% cotton, 1% elastane version, and I didn't choose that because I just didn't see it at my local store. But ultimately, nothing wows me 
about this jean from the fit to the way it looks to the material so I just cannot justify that extremely high price point for a basic wear I'm already happy with it at Levi's and Neverland. I'm going to place these jeans at the very top because of the price point and then from the ranking they go somewhere in the middle where aesthetically I prefer them to the mango jeans but I actually don't like it as much as the Levi ribcage or the way high. So to answer the question if this a Goldie Riley is worth it, if you're a huge denim lover and you're all about the details, stitching, construction, and you just love the craftsmanship, I would say that I can see a visible difference in the Agoldi jeans. But for the average wearer where, you know, we're thinking about the price and quality and we're trying to find some balance here, I would say that it's not really worth it to me. I almost wasn't going to include this last pair. This is the Uniqlo um, like denim drapey pants. And the reason why I was considering not including these is because they're in between a jean and a pant. Um, and they're very, very lightweight because of that. What this one has that the other jeans don't have is a very wide leg shape. So very flowy and comfortable. And then it's also got elastic on the back, making it super comfortable on the waist as well. If you find most jeans too uncomfortable, too restrictive, especially for the everyday, then I would point you to these jeans because they truly feel ultra comfortable like a loose trouser. I'm going to place this jean obviously at the very bottom of the price scale. And then it's going to be towards the right side because I do think that they're a very good option for those looking for comfort and that wide leg style. I've been filming for so long I had to go off and take a little lunch break but let's review the final two pairs of jeans. This one is a Cezanne Le Crop jean and I get so many questions about these whether it's petite friendly and whether it's a good length and then also about the denim quality. This Le Crop jean is something that does stand out to me in today's video and I feel like it's one of my favorite new discoveries. Had I not looked at the label I would have thought this would be 100% cotton because it is more on the rigid side. It's a little bit of a thicker denim and then around the waistband it almost feels like it's double layer reinforced because this waistband feels thicker and it feels like it really holds me in around the waist. This thicker waistband makes it feel really flattering along the waist which I of course like. The denim used in this jean also feels really good quality. It's got a certain thickness and softness to it. This jean is obviously a slightly wider leg style and to be honest I wouldn't say that this jean is the most elongating, it's the most flattering in the traditional sense but I just kind of love the vibe of a wide leg jean. Final thing to mention is that the details on Cezanne jeans feel next level. For example, you've got the size stitched in. On the button, it says Cezanne denim, and it's this brushed gold, really elegant hardware. For the Cezanne jeans, they're just under the Everlane price point, and I'm gonna put it between the Uniqlo denim and my Levi's ribcage. The final jean to talk about is the Arquette Rose Cropped. So first thing I notice about these jeans is that it feels like it's the same jean as my Levi ribcage in the medium blue wash. I think that even if I were to wear these and take photos, I wouldn't really be able to tell which is which because they're so similar. This is 99% cotton, 1% elastane, and like the Levi ribcage jeans, I think these are very, very nice in quality. The denim feels comparable, the comfort feels comparable, everything is honestly the same to me. The tiny differences for me is that this comes at the perfect length, and unlike the Levi ribcage, you don't have three to choose from, there is just the one. For the Arquette jean, when I convert everything to Australian dollars, it's about the same as the Levi ribcage, but I'm going to put it slightly to the left, because it has less colors and for a lot of people, it's a little bit harder to get your hands on. Let's share the final results and see whether more expensive is actually better. If more expensive was better, my graph would look like this. But instead, we're going up and down and we can see that price and quality is not directly always related. However, as the price point increases, usually we will see some difference in the quality. The jean that is at my first place would be the Everlane Way High jeans. I find these jeans to be perfect in every way, from fit and comfort to style, and they are slightly more preferable now to me than the ribcage. I would still consider the ribcage a very, very, very good jean, and to be honest, these two are very, very close, so you could really go both ways, depending on what's more accessible to you. The jean today that has the best attention to detail will be the Cezanne. If there is one thing Cezanne is really good at, it's details. 
and you can really see that through their denim as well. My favorite affordable jean would be the Uniqlo, but in case you didn't consider that like a proper jean, I would say of the affordable jeans, the best one was the mango one because for a mid-rise, I just found it so flattering. Ultimately, with the Agoldi Riley and other high-end jeans, I think that a lot of styles out there could fit me really, really well. Um, but ultimately, because I'm so happy with my Everlane Way High, and the ribcage, I don't feel the need to spend extra to purchase those jeans. The worst pair of this lot would be the pull and bear because there was honestly nothing too special about them. But if I'm being honest, they were actually not awful. They were simply the worst of this lot. Thank you so much for watching. If there is anything you're curious about, you can ask me down below. And then I also have the information in the description box as well. Have a lovely week and I'll see you next one. Bye.